Now you might already know about Chris Brown and Frank Ocean's face-off that happened in 2013, but you might not know that the seeds of this beef were planted way back in 2011 by everyone's favorite walking paradox Tyler the Creator. Initially when Tyler was getting a buzz back in 2011, Chris Brown decided to put out a little sneak this on Twitter saying, all of this demonic music is whack, what happened to people being happy? Essentially sprinkling a little dab of salt on Tyler the Creator's demonic gothic angsty style of music that was really popping off at the time. In response, Tyler hit back with some pretty strong replies saying why is Chris Brown so mad about Metallica and suggesting that he looks like a box of pops. Meanwhile, Chris Brown decided to throw fellow Odd Future crew member Frank Ocean into the mix by sarcastically comparing him to a young James Fauntleroy or Kevin Kasim. Now, no points lost if you don't immediately know who these two people are. Both artists are mainly known for their work in the shadows, writing for other artists and we mustn't forget that this whole Twitter war took place in June 2011, which is an entire year before Frank Ocean would even sign his Def Jam deal that he would famously later go on to finesse for $20 million. At this point in his career, Frank Ocean's high profile work was limited to the indie release of his mixtape Nostalgia Ultra and his feature on the song She from Tyler the Creator's album. Frank Ocean was still a couple of months away from his high profile features on Jay Z and Kanye West Watch the Throne album. But this wasn't yet public knowledge, so it was likely that Frank was probably feeling the burn from that tweet. Frank clapped back on Twitter and compared Chris Brown to a young Cisco as well as Ike Turner. Now, if you know anything about Ike Turner, let's just say that Ike Turner and Chris Brown have a lot in common as well. The beef between Chris Brown and Tyler raged on on Twitter and Tyler went on on a Chris Brown roast fest, dropping some of the most savage burns I've ever seen Chris Brown being subjected to. Some of the highlights include Chris went to his barber and said, can I get a effed up with a taper? Chris Brown is a stunt double for a highlighter, he thinks he's a sunflower and many many more. Tyler went even further and compared Chris Brown's hair to Amber Rose. Chris Brown obviously didn't like that very much and decided to take the beef to the next level. He tweeted and said that he was on Fairfax the day before and that Tyler's crew was super quiet and easy to find. Tyler the creator leaned into the more serious side of the beef and to everyone's surprise said that he was there when Chris Brown was in San Diego with three bodyguards and Tyler was ready to pull up on him which is scary cause we all know how real it gets when Tyler pulls up on you. Nigga I told you better. Don't do that shit. I told your fat ass self, you gonna hurt yourself. Cut that shit out you too. Now, unlike Tyler the Creator, Frank Ocean doesn't do much talking. Instead, he actually pulled up to where Chris Brown was recording and decided to wait outside for Chris Brown. After a few hours of waiting, word eventually got to Chris and he sent a group of his cousins over to Frank Ocean. This forces Frank Ocean to quickly get back into his car since he was all alone. Frank then pulls off and the cousins also hopped into their cars and started chasing down Frank Ocean. They started asking Frank Frank Ocean why he's running and Frank said only one thing, he wants Chris Brown. For the record, no one actually got hurt during the car chase. One of the dudes in the car, an LA street dude for real, affiliated to Chris Brown, later came out and said he was embarrassed by the whole ordeal and said he respected how Frank Ocean handled the whole thing. I mean, Frank did a few things correctly. For starters, he didn't just drive off and ignore them. He also wasn't yelling back and stated clearly that he was there only for Chris Brown, proving that he wasn't all bark and no bite. Frank also didn't act scared by immediately spitting off in a panic and as you can see from the video he was very calm and collected. Now Chris Brown's cousins kept telling Frank Ocean to come back with them to the studio and they'll show him where Chris Brown is. Frank Ocean being wise declined the offer sensing that something was up and immediately knew that if he took them up on their offer it wouldn't be a fair fight. The whole altercation went viral online and since everyone wanted to make it in music Chris Brown was the first to go online and admit that the whole thing was a little intense and it probably went farther than than it was supposed to. Tyler also claimed jokingly that some of Chris Brown's boys pulled up on him as well. Stop trying to get me, car! Stop trying to get me! Stop trying to get me! Yeah. Oh my. After this, Tyler the Creator also took to his socials and said it all got a little too real and it seems like both sides were ready to bury the hatchet and call it a truce except for Frank Ocean. Now, Frank Ocean doesn't put up anything on his socials about the beef and basically remained quiet making it seem that it's all settled and everyone is having a good time. This was until Frank decides to come out publicly to say that he's bi. Now, this may not be a big deal now but back in the day if you are an artist associated in any way with rap and decide 
decide to come out of the closet, it was a massive deal. This quickly thrust Frank Ocean into the mainstream, exactly like what happened to Lil Nas X. When Old Town Road was released, Lil Nas X was rising but when he came out publicly, his rise to fame got a whole new push. Around this same time, Chris Brown's post about the reconciliation of the beef was mysteriously deleted from Twitter. Interestingly, Chris Brown was asked about Frank Ocean's revelation by paparazzi outside of a nightclub, to which he left the simple response, no homo. Since there was no footage of Chris actually saying this, he took to his socials denying the rumors in a tweet that has since been deleted. No one actually knows how Frank Ocean took this or if he was still mad at the first situation and just never got over it, but the beef jumped back into the skillet when Chris Brown was recording in Los Angeles, California, where both Tyler the Creator and Frank Ocean are from. Frank Ocean gets a word of this and pulls up to the Westlake recording studio while Chris Brown was there. He finds Chris Brown parked at the same spot that he usually parks at, so Frank parks in front of Chris Brown so Chris can't leave. When Chris comes out of the studio after his session, he finds a car parked in front of his blocking his exit and was duly informed that it belonged to Frank Ocean. Chris sends someone over to Frank to ask him to move the car, to which Frank Ocean comes out to meet Chris and declines to move the car and instead escalates the whole situation. Chris Brown for a moment tried to defuse the situation by shaking Frank's hand, but Frank immediately refused. Offended by this, Chris proceeded to punch Frank Ocean in the face and then a brawl ensued. Though for fairness and transparency, I do have to say that after this happened, conflicting reports did come out that it was actually people in Frank Ocean's crew that had taken the first swing at Chris Brown's crew. There are so many conflicting reports about how exactly the brawl started, so we'll never truly know exactly who instigated this and the closest we're probably gonna get is an account by Sean Kingston who says that he was at the studio when the fight went down and that it wasn't Chris Brown's fault suggesting that either Frank or his crew of Crips instigated the fight. You know what I'm saying? He was reaching out trying to give Frank Ocean a dap. Frank Ocean didn't want to give him back a dap. And you know what I'm saying? Frank Ocean was talking shit like, oh, because I guess he had some crip guys with him. He was like, where, whatever. And that's what happened. You know? Eventually, Chris gets pulled out because he hurts his hand, but the brawl is still ensuing. Now, rumor has it that Vince Staples is actually the reason why the brawl stopped. This is because Vince brought an actual gat to the brawl. If you're wondering why this seems a little random, well, Vince was a little more than the funny guy we know back in the day. Let's just say he's from Long Beach, California, same place as Snoop Dogg, and they both really love the color blue. Now, Frank is friends with Vince cause Vince is an associate of the group Odd Future. He was never officially part of the group but he was really close to the group. So back to the brawl, Vince took out his gat and everyone backed off like whoa. After that, eventually everyone disperses. So regardless of whoever started the brawl, it sounds like Chris and his crew got the better of Frank Ocean and in the official incident report, Frank Ocean was referred to as the victim but purely because he was the only person that had stuck around and spoken to the police. Luckily, Frank's injuries weren't substantial and he refused medical assistance at the scene but later did go to the hospital with a cut on his left temple and right index finger. Frank later confirmed the beatdown and finger injury on Twitter saying that he wishes his Burmese mountain dog Everest was there. A few weeks later, Frank went on to say that he couldn't play with two hands at the Grammys because of his finger injury but in the end he did manage to get enough finger strength to get through the performance. Though despite these difficulties, he went on to win best contemporary R&B album, beating out Chris Brown and you could see Chris was visibly annoyed being the only person in the auditorium standing up when Frank went to collect the award. But let's not forget on the flip side, the injured fingered Frank Ocean wasn't the only person who came out of that brawl with an injury. In the days that followed, Chris Brown was spotted wearing a cast on his arm which could have been injury sustained from punching Frank Ocean. Now, initially the LA County Sheriff's Department said that Frank Ocean was looking to press charges and desired prosecution in the case but eventually he decided against it and he was calling peace and sanity suggesting that he would not press charges in a Tumblr post. Apparently, the sheriff's department was still looking to proceed with misdemeanor battery charges. So while this beef was never fully resolved, Frank Ocean still continued trolling Chris Brown by wearing a t-shirt with Chris's name on it that said wanted for DV. So what do you guys think? Comment down below and as always, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.